BBs. Welcome back. This is the fourth video in our zero tutorial series. Our last video we went over hair meshes and customizing hair for your models. This video we will be going over how to give movement to that hair with bones. So in order to make our model move, a network of bones is added to the geometry. This process is called rigging and let me tell you baby, it is quite the process to do from scratch. I still got PTSD from doing it in school and I am not a rigger. And if you are like me, luckily for us, v has done that process for us. So you do not have to suffer through the monumental task of giving this bitch a skeleton. Thank, thank, uh, thank you. You can edit the model's rig once you have it done. You just cannot edit the body inside the program. You'll have to use a separate program like Blender or Maya in order to um, edit the frame. But with the hair, you can go ahead and edit the rig directly in app. So today we're gonna be going over that process and how you will be able to give life to your hair. All right, so let's go ahead and navigate to our editing window for our hair. If you go underneath one of the tabs for your hair pieces, um, you'll remember we went on the right hand side and pressed edit hairstyle. This time we're gonna do edit hair bounce and that's going to bring you into the window to edit the bones. So in this program, we have the ability to um, add bones to the hair, adjust the bones so that they give us different dynamics and we can also decide whether we want to group hairs together and form one big bone group or do individual hairs. So in order to select your hair or give it a bone, you're going to go ahead and click on a hair and you'll see that it'll turn a, a color. It'll highlight for you. Once you have the hair, if you wanna do an individual hair or let's say I kind of don't necessarily want to do each individual hair. It can kind of move all together. It doesn't need, it doesn't have that much information. And it's actually a very good idea to kind of reduce the information attached to your model to the bare minimum. You don't want to have a bunch of bones. You don't want to have a bunch of information lagging your model because that will cause processing issues in other programs or like just, it'll be hard on your computer in order to run using the model because the file's so big. Let, let's say I want to group them together or I have the hair, the hairs that I wanted selected. I'm going to create a bone group. It's going to change it. It's going to assign it a new color. And just so you can see this, I'm going to select two more. I'm going to create another bone group. And now you can see there are two different colors. I have this group and this group. When we actually click on the group, as you can see, it, it'll drop down our menu and we'll be able to access each individual hair. We'll be able to see what hairs are included in this one group. And you'll see that there are these gray little pinpoints here. These are your bones. This is what is going to give the program or whatever your program you're using your model in the information it needs to make the hair move the way it's supposed to. All of our grouped hairs are in this little window and everything that is not grouped is down here. So we can either, we can also select them here and group them or you can directly click on them and select them that way. If I put a hair in a group and I do not like it, I don't want it there anymore, I can go over here to the right hand side, remove it from the hair group, and now it is no longer there. I wanna put it back. I would go ahead and move to selected, select the hair that I want, select the group that I want, and move to selected group. Now it's back. Let's talk about these parameters. I'm gonna select my group and I'm gonna select the hair that I wanna add. And I'm going to move to selected group. Now I have hairs, but they're in different parts of the the head. But as you can see, all of my bones are focused over here. And that means all of my information is going to read for these. And this little hair over here is not really going to get any of it. If I want to kind of position it in the middle, I'm going to move to group center. And now it's a little adjusted. So it kind of spreads that information out. Our next thing is basically how many bones that we can have. I recommend again, for sake of um, information, you do not want to go um, with a lot of bones. You want to kind of keep them as minimal as you can. I usually don't use more than three or four unless my hair is really long um, and I'm trying to do very complicated things with it. You honestly don't need that many, um, but you can put a whole bunch or not that many. The more bones you have, the more information, the more movement, the less bones you have, the stiffer your hair is going to be because there's not as much information. Again, I like to stay between about four, three or four. Your fixed point is basically the point where your hair is going to move from. So I'm going to actually put one fixed point really high on the head 
And then we're gonna put the fixed point on this group really low. And then we're gonna go ahead and see. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, as far as I know, there is no way to see it live, the movement live in the editor. You're going to have to go ahead and go out. You can save this. I already have my front and back, or my front and extra, so I'm just going to save the back. I'm gonna overwrite it. And then we're gonna go to our camera, which is our live view editor. And I just wanna show you the mo movement. So basically I went into poses and animation. She's in the running animation. And I used this just to kind of see the bounce. So we had our two fixed points here. This one has the fixed point up really high and this one has the point really low. As you can see, our hair is moving from this point of her head. It's wiggling around. She's got a lot of movement based on where we put that marker. On this one, the fixed point was a lot lower, so all of this is still while we get a little bit of movement at the bottom. Stiffness is basically how the hair moves in like, um, like flowiness, so the stiffer it is, the less it moves, the less stiff it is, the more it moves. So I'm gonna turn the, all the way down on this first group, and then on the second group, we're going to yank that bitch up. And now let's see the difference. So as you can see, this one's got like a nice little wiggle to it. It's very super, super flowy. Whereas this one is not moving that much at all. Gravity is more like, um, you know, self-explanatory. It talks about like the effects it has based on gravity. So like if you're in space, your hair would be floaty around. There would be nothing pulling it down. If the gravity is really high, that means it is not moving anywhere. Um, that is kind of what that is. And then let's talk about your hit radius. So basically around each one of these bones, there is a hula hoop basically of information being like, we cannot touch here. It, it basically acts as a barrier between one piece of geometry and another. So in order to keep from clipping, when you're when when you have things that are clipping into your face, your clothes, your hit boxes are a little too small. When you make them bigger, they tend to um, read as like, oh, I can't touch this, so I'm gonna stay away from that. I'm gonna show it to you just so you can kind of see. So on the first one, we're gonna turn it down. And on this back one, we're gonna turn it up. And as you can see, the little dots get larger. So it's our hula hoop around our joints are just getting a little bigger. I'm going to save this. This one is basically like, oh, can't get nowhere near this ear. Nowhere near here. Whereas this one is a lot closer to um, the head. And you can see it clipping through the ear. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these bone groups, which you can do by right clicking and pressing delete bone group, delete bone group. And now it's going to all my hairs are back in unselected. And what I can do here is I can select all of them and auto generate a bone group, which is basically going to divvy up your, your hair in, in a way where it just add, automatically adds bone groups. You can also edit the amount of groups that are generated by this slider right here. So if you turn it down um, and select all your hair, it's going to group it in as many groups as you designate it to. So this is also a really good way to kind of get your hair done very quickly. You don't have to go in and add hairs individually. I would start here if this is your first time and then you can make adjustments as you go. And that's pretty much it, babies. You should be able to take all that information from the last two, this video and the last video, and be able to create your hairs to your little heart's desire. We went over modifying, we went over customizing, we went over movement, so you should be pretty set. Next time we're gonna be talking about exporting and setting it up inside of whatever platform that you're going to be using. We're gonna go over just the final touches, putting the final touches on your, your model, how to save, and how to go ahead and set up your models. I will make a separate video on how to do the face movement um, and tracking like that, but we are almost at the end. We have about two more videos. I'm super proud of you for making it this far, and hopefully you this has made your life a little bit easier. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe so that you you get notifications whenever a new one will drop and until next time babies i hope you know that you are loved and you are valued and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day bye